Thanks so much, Kelly. Well, as I said, today is the last day of April, and tomorrow kicks off Motorcycle Awareness Month. For all of you out there who might be thinking, I don't drive a motorcycle, that doesn't matter to me, but you do need to be aware out on the roads. Jim Kelly is here with me this morning. And basic motorcycle safety for other drivers, what are some main tips? Well, as you can tell from this morning's fog out here, it's very important for motorcyclists to be seen and for have the motorists to see the motorcycles. Yeah. Responsibility of the motorcyclists is to wear reflective clothing, bright uh, colors, uh, use their headlight, especially in this kind of weather. Yeah. And motorists should take an extra minute to look for a motorcycle. With this uh, season just kicking off, uh, we, we're looking, we're getting motorcycles out on the road. And today would be very different. Even on a nice day, sure. motorcycles are hard to find out in this traffic mix. So we're asking motorists to take that extra second, look both ways, look again, and see if there's a motorcycle coming. Absolutely. I know I always get a little nervous around motorcycles in my car. You, you see one coming up the road behind you, and should you slow down? Should you try and get in front of it? What What's some tips for, for being out there just on a straightaway road? It is. It's tough for, for motorists to understand. That sometimes a motorcycle has to do something that, that the motorist has no idea. We have to swerve around holes. We have to go around potholes. Um, sometimes we have to speed up and slow down because that's where the traffic mix. We ask that motorists give us about a three or four second following distance, allow that room to go there. Now, motorcyclists also have a responsibility to follow the traffic laws, not to pass on the right, and not to take advantage of the small size of their vehicle. Really, it's a, it's a matter of sharing the road. We have to get there safely because fatalities are way too high for cars and for motorcycles. Well, you, you mentioned the season. I'm assuming that it's getting warmer. More folks are going to be out there enjoying the weather on their bikes. This beautiful weather like today? Sure, there's going to be a lot of people out there this morning. Um, yes, there's going to be a lot more people out there, A lot, especially with gas prices going up. Um, especially with nice weather coming in, there's going to be more motorcyclists out there. <clears throat> so they need to be aware that we're going to be out on the road. And the motorcyclists have to be aware that in the traffic mix, mistakes are going to be made. Intersections are very dangerous. Corners are very dangerous. So they need to work together to be out there on the road safely. Taking some of those extra precautions, it is illegal to not wear a helmet in the state of Georgia. Am I correct? Correct. It must be a DOT certified helmet. And you've got one of those right here, DOT yeah. certified. What exactly does that mean? It's the way the, ma the uh, helmet was manufactured to certain standards. There are these what we call novelty helmets out there. They run about maybe $10, $15, but they're not there to protect your head in, in, in the case of a crash. Now, when you go to buy a helmet, does it say that you know it's certified there on the, the case? Do you have to come to the DOT to get it certified? How does that work? No, actually the manufacturers certify it. There's a little okay. sticker on the back of the helmet that tells you that it's DOT certified, and there'll be a new sticker coming out this way. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has redesigned the sticker to make it more visible and that you have a, 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 a nice, safe helmet. You can see from this type of helmet, there's a lot of padding inside. It's a lot of um, good protective ability as opposed to a novelty helmet. Life-saving is what it really comes down to. Well, we've got lots more safety tips and, again, just some overall information about motorcycles that's coming to you live here on Good Day This Morning. Back to you guys in the studio. Welcome back to Good Day, everyone. We are live here at the Department of Driver Services talking all about motorcycle safety. Again, May, which is tomorrow, if you can believe it or not, is Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month. And that's for both riders of motorcycles and just everybody else who's in cars, trucks, SUVs, whatever it may be out on the roads. Jim Kelly, you are here with us talking all about this motorcycle safety class that you guys offer, which is for the riders of motorcycles. That it is. That it is. <laughs> now, it is illegal to not have a motorcycle license and drive a motorcycle. That's correct. You must have a motorcycle license to operate a motorcycle in the state of Georgia. Um, one of the easiest ways of getting it is obviously taking a motorcycle course. There's a couple of benefits to that. Not only do we have professional training by professional coaches sure. in the operation of a motorcycle, it's only two days long, but a, a successful student can earn their motorcycle license by taking the test. What that means is at the end of the course, we give them a license test waiver card. They bring that down to the Department of Driver Services, and they do not have to take the knowledge test or the skills test. Nice. We've already done that after professional training. Another benefit of our course is that we provide the motorcycles, the fuel, the, mm. the training, and the space. How nice, especially with the prices of gas these days. Oh, yeah. it is, and we got plenty of people coming through. In fact, in the last five years, three of our highest enrollment months were in the last five years. Oh, wow. 
So we've done as much as 8,000 people in a year. Um, we expect probably this year to do about 7,000. Now, we're thinking, you know, of course, saving gas, to use up all your own gas and everything. But if people are a little unsure about driving a motorcycle or purchasing a motorcycle, because it can be quite a commitment financially, you kind of give them the opportunity to, to feel it out, test it out, and find out if this is something they really want to commit to. It's the perfect way of doing it. Before you invest ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for a new motorcycle, you can come to our course. We put you on small motorcycles, easy to control, and you learn the basic handling. We also add into that survival skills, mm -hmm. so that when you're on the motorcycle in the street, you'll have some some experience to how to deal with a lot of the, the different situations that'll show up for riding a motorcycle. Certainly, you and I were chatting a little off camera earlier that me as a driver, you know, in a regular car, I might be just be thinking, oh, the motorcyclist is, you know, going back and forth and having a little bit of fun with it, but that actually could be a safety precaution. It is, it is. A lot of people don't realize how a motorcycle operates or handles, mm -hmm. but if the motorcycle is going down the road, if there's a pothole or if there's a, uh, a, a, a an object in the road, the motorcyclist is going to have to swerve around that. It may even have to weave between certain cracks in the road or water on the road. And what happens is the motorist who doesn't understand that looks and says the motorcyclist is doing something stupid. Yeah. And they're not. They're actually handling that motorcycle in a proper way. And even little things like flying bugs, cigarette butts going out a window, oh, yes. they all cause distractions for motorcyclists. Which last April was distracted driving month, and we talk about that. What happens on a motorcyclist, if, if you're out there and you get hit by a bug at 55 miles an hour, your attention to handling that motorcycle is gone, and you must be aware of that. So everyone needs to take a couple extra seconds out there on the road. Well, we are going to cross our fingers that this fog will lift a little bit. We want to get out and show you some little demonstrations that they will do in that motorcycle class that we are talking about out here. Back to you guys in the studio. We are live out here on this very, very, very foggy Tuesday morning. But this Tuesday morning is also the last day of April, which means tomorrow kicks off Motorcycle Safety Awareness Day. And we're going to cross our fingers that you all there at home can see. We've got Tom, who is our wonderful motorcycle demonstrator, who's going to kind of show a little bit about what you guys do here at this motorcycle class. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's going to be a short, brief demo. Um, it's just we've taken one of the exercises out just to show you what the control of a motorcycle would be. Certainly. So we're going to step out of the way. We're going to let Tom come on in here. And like I said, hopefully y'all can see that we've got some lights set up and everything. So Tom, go on. Go ahead. Go. I'm sure it's a little loud there in the helmet. Not too many other noises he can hear. He can hear pretty well under a helmet. It, really? it doesn't distract from, uh, from the noise. It actually helps with uh, traffic noises. Oh. What he's doing right now is what we call an offset weave. It helps demonstrate the skill and handling a motorcycle at slow speeds. You'll notice how he's operating the, the motorcycle around each cone. If we had a little brighter sunshine out there, you'd be able to see his head. It's very important where you look on a motorcycle. In essence, where you look is where you're going to go. And right now, even though he's going around each cone, he's, he's looking straight ahead. That's what helps keep his balance. So you don't want to look in the direction that you want to go? You always want to look straight ahead? No, you want to look in the direction you want to go. If okay. he were to look down at one of those cones, he would have run it over ah. and he would not be able to go so around it. So we're going to have you keep going a couple more times okay. if that's all right. Just, just keep going. I'll keep going until you tell me to stop. Yeah, keep on going. We want to show folks there at home when you're talking about driving a motorcycle, there are lots of distractions on the road that motorcyclists need to be aware of. Right, and it's going to take their attention away from operating the motorcycle, but they have to keep themselves aware of that. Those distractions could be very, very dangerous. Same thing with motorists. If they're distracted, if they're on the phone, if they're eating, if they're putting on makeup or getting dressed in their car, sure. it's going to take away their vision of what's out on the road, and that's what's causing a lot of crashes. Now, get, whoa, that light is bright. Tom <laughs> is going at a very slow rate of speed. Is it easier to handle a motorcycle at a high rate of speed? It is. The motorcycle will balance itself at a high rate of speed. So uh, people that are going... not wanting to focus for you guys there at home. I'm sorry, <laughs> folks. At a high rate of speed, the motorcycle will hold itself up. It'll balance itself. At a slow speed, the rider has to do a lot more work in terms of balancing the motorcycle. Okay, well, we're trying to work on our camera skills, guys. I'm, I'm talking. I'm, I'm working camera. I am trying to get you guys to see Tom here. There we go. I think he's coming back into focus. And you notice how he's keeping good. Even though the surface of the road is slippery right now, mm -hmm. he's keeping a nice, steady pace. He's keeping his... his uh, 
throttle control nice and steady so that it doesn't uh, slip out the wheels. Sure, sure. Very interesting. A lot goes into riding a motorcycle. A lot more than people realize. You just don't swing a leg over it, get on and ride. Absolutely. So this is all going on in the class that you guys offer. It's two days to become, I guess, certified, right. you could say, in, in motorcyclists. And, and we take people that have absolutely no experience whatsoever and can actually ride a motorcycle. We also have classes for experienced riders. Okay. Well, we're going to try and come back into focus again. Maybe in just one person out here in the mornings, it, it, it's a little, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of work out here in the morning, guys. <laughs> but we are hoping to get you guys safe out on the roads and just stay safe and save some lives out there. Back to you guys in the studio. We are live here in the parking lot of the Department of Driver Services. This is one of the locations all across the state that you all offer this motorcycle safety course. That's How correct. can folks sign up for this class? Well, they can visit our website, www.dds.ga.gov, and register. There's a lot of information on that site mm -hmm. for the, about the program. That sounds great. Now, that safety class is not required, recommended, of course, but a motorcycle license is required. What happens if folks just go out and buy a motorcycle and don't have a license? Well, they can get a, a, a learner's permit, but allow them to ride, but we always encourage folks folks to get a license. Statistically, having a license, there's less fatalities involved. Um, but don't forget also scooters. Anything over 51 cc's is considered a motorcycle, yeah. and they will need a motorcycle license. Now, 51 cc's, again, I've, I've mentioned a few times this morning that I'm not, you know, quite motorcycle lingo savvy or anything. Is that the size of an engine? It's about the size of a small lawnmower engine. Oh, wow. And then you can see with our motorcycle that we use for the demonstration, that's 1,300 cc's. Goodness. A but large you motorcycle. You said 55? 51 cc's. 51 cc's. So motorcycles oh. would be considered, or excuse me, of course motorcycles would be considered <laughs> in that. Scooters, as well as the, the three three-wheeled motorcycles, right. the trikes. And right, like there's that. trikes, three-wheel motorcycles, and motorcycles that have sidecars. Those are also three-wheelers. They're considered motorcycles, mm -hmm. and you do need a motorcycle license to operate those. Sounds good. Now, we are talking about motorcycle safety. Motorcycle safety awareness kicks off tomorrow, the, the whole month, to celebrate it and get the word out. But not only motorcycle drivers, but also regular motorists. That's correct. I mean, it's very important for motorists to look for motorcycles. We're not out there all season and all year, mm -hmm. but around this nice weather, we start Start coming out there and it really needs to have that extra look they just need to double check for us out there mm -hmm. and the responsibility of the motorcycle is not to sneak up on cars not to surprise them and not to have them do something that puts each other into harm's way certainly always taking a couple extra seconds you've got a nice little bumper sticker here share the road yep you can bring this back for the crew there you distribute go. that and put it all on your Fox awesome. news we want to make sure everybody gets the word out but how long should people give distance wise between they should, motorcycles and cars they should be at least three or four seconds. The motorcycle can stop really quick mm -hmm. and, the, and the car will take a little bit longer to stop. So leave that distance about three or four seconds between the cars. Sure. And you, we were talking all morning long about how little things, a, a pothole, a crack in the road, that motorists, you know, driving cars, trucks, SUVs, whether, whatever it may be, might just think they're, you know, having a little fun, but really that's all safety precautions. It is. Most times it is. Uh, we're also having a little fun, too, <laughs> while we're out there. Um, that's but, why you ride a motorcycle. Exactly. Right? Um, but going for car drivers going over a pothole, it's not a big deal. But for a motorcycle, it's a two-wheel vehicle, it could be a dangerous situation. That's why we need to go around them. Absolutely. Helmets are required here in the state of Georgia? Yes, they are. A DOT certified helmet is required in the state of Georgia. Uh, first line of defense, of course, we want to prevent any type of accident, but motorcycle statistics, fatalities are unfortunately on the rise. It is across the country. Um, in fact, in 2008, it was the highest year here in Georgia for fatalities, 178. Um, with the program and our enrollments going up and a lot of uh, activity by law enforcement and other safety agencies, mm -hmm. the fatalities are starting to drop. Uh, GOHS's uh, initial um, survey of fatalities for 2012 was 132, wow. which is a significant drop. Absolutely. And we'd like to keep that going down. Absolutely. Even one accident is too many. One is way so too So we've many. got lots of great tips out here this morning. Again, take an extra few seconds out there on the road as the weather is getting nicer and put more motorcyclists will be out there on the roads. Back to you guys in the studio.